Tonight's date is Monday, February 16th, 2015. First stock I want to look at is Tesla. Tesla reported earnings this past week and is in an interesting spot because you're just kind of hanging out right around 200 bucks and you know to me I think if Tesla loses 200 here then you could challenge this support you know down around 185 and if you were to lose 185 you could go you know a lot lower but that's getting ahead of ourselves first things first though it's just all about 200 bucks on Tesla if you can hold 200 bucks, you can set up to bounce back up towards this trend line here that you just got rejected at off of a back test. <clears throat> and just so you guys know, these two trend lines here are equal slopes, and this trend line uh, doesn't have a, a second one yet, but it will soon once a new trend gets established. But at any rate here, so Tesla over under 200 bucks. Let's see if it can bottom out and hold. If not, we could be going a lot lower. And I want to look at a weekly chart to show pretty clearly this support that you have right around the 180 area and where we might be going if we lose that. So you can see for the last year, year and a half, Tesla really has been in a very wide channel between 200 and 260 with a brief move above 260 earlier in 2014 over the summer and a you know a couple brief moves where we've stayed below 200 back in May of 2014 and then again a couple times recently at the end of last year and then most recently at the beginning of this year we've come below 200 a couple times each time though stocks ended up getting bought up back above 200 and ultimately held that 200 support to me one of the things I look for is it's not where a stock goes it's where a stock stays so you can have your resistance levels and your support levels and all that good stuff and you know right now you could argue that Tesla's breaking $200 support, or you could have argued that a few weeks ago. But to me, I don't argue that until the stock stays below $200. All right, so we're going to need to see some confirmation. We're going to need to see some consistent holds below 200 in order to look for a down move. If you do break solidly below 200 and go towards that 180 test, this would be very critical support. This has been kind of the line in the sand for the last year, year and a half now. And if you were to lose that, the next level to me that stands out is really not until somewhere between 120 and 150. This pocket of demand that you had in October, November 2013 when you had a big drop from 190s down to like 116s. <clears throat> so Tesla's in an intriguing spot to me. And if you notice, this was a monthly, uh, sorry, weekly uptrend line that got formed in early 2013, early to mid 2013, and it tried to hold this uptrend line at the end of last year. You've since given way. You're below the uptrend line now, and you just back tested it ahead of earnings, but got rejected and now moved back down. So, long story short, what does Tesla do at 200 bucks? To me, that's really going to dictate things. If you hold, you could set up for a nice bounce back to the upside. And if you were to lose it, then we could see Tesla going down and testing that 180 level. As far as bounce areas, key resistance is this 220 level. You know, again, you talk about it's not where you go, it's where you stay. Since December, you haven't been able, been able to stay above 220. You've made a couple attempts above it, but both times ended up coming back down. So we need to see Tesla staying above 220 before it can really confirm a momentum move to the upside coming back into play, in which case I'd then look for a move back up towards the 260s, kind of that longer term channel resistance that we saw in 2014. So that's what I see going on in Tesla. 
want to look at Netflix as Netflix is starting to push above some key resistance levels and looks like it wants to go back towards the all-time high I also want to short show this chart this is a three minute chart from the end of the day on Friday you can see from about 130 into the close Netflix made a very nice move going from 460s to 466 closed at its highs for the week and I'm gonna show you a weekly chart that shows Netflix is up five weeks in a row she hasn't had a winning streak like that in a while so you're up five weeks in a row you'd have to go back to July of 2013 to see a winning streak like that and you can see you went up one two three four five six seven eight weeks in a row before the stock kinda paused a little bit but then ultimately continued on higher and what's interesting to me about you know comparing that July 2013 sequence is then the stock was on its way up from a bottom after having fallen from three hundred dollars back in 2011 Netflix if you were trading a few years ago it was a very famous fall it went from three hundred down to sixty and then ultimately came back up to three hundred I find it interesting though that this five week winning streak took the stock right back up towards that all-time high and then the sixth and seventh up weeks in a row ended up taking the stock to new all-time highs well if we look here what do we have going on guys we had a very famous fall from 480 down to 300 granted not the same type of fall as 2011 but still a lot of hoopla surrounded that Mark Cuban came in and took a stake Carl Icahn exited a stake a lot of turnover ultimately though here we are stock is up five weeks in a row and would you look at that we're right back near the all-time high but we haven't yet made new all-time highs so maybe just throwing it out there maybe we see Netflix go on to rally a sixth and seventh week in a row to take the stock to new all-time highs just like it did in 2013 whatever I just said it was yep July two, July August 2013 when that move was going on so again this is a weekly chart I was just looking at <clears throat> so daily immediate term I like this setup because you had a very clear channel here between about 440 and 460 and you then got a clean breakout on Friday as I showed so now as long as we stay above 460 Netflix has momentum to the upside and that's where I'm looking for this thing to go so I'll be watching for dips that hold 460 I'll be looking at those as buying opportunities any dip that holds 460 is a momentum buying opportunity on Netflix in my view if you break 460 that sets up a back test on 450 and you know this channel support down at 440 but ultimately as long as you hold these lows from this channel you know around 440 high 430s Netflix is in good shape longer term to intermediate term in terms though of the immediate term trade you know that 460 level is the one I'll be watching don't be surprised if Netflix continues to see more momentum I like setups like this I have a love-hate relationship with them because on the hate side of things you look at it you're like man the stocks up four days in a row you just went from 438 to 466 I'm not chasing it up here I'm gonna wait for it to pull back but then on the love side of the equation is man this stock just went up 30 points in four days you know what what can it do with another four days and knowing how I think how I just said man I don't want to chase it here I think a lot of people aren't going to be want to be buyers of Netflix up here and what that represents is sideline money so you need money to remain on the sidelines to still push prices higher because ultimately what drives stocks higher new money coming in so the fact that we're a little bit overbought here but you're breaking out I think you could see some forced buying on Netflix just psychologically as people just start to look at this 485 490 level which is the all-time high and think man if I want to get in before it goes to all-time highs I better just buy it right here so Netflix intriguing setup to me in my list of primary stocks Netflix outright has the best momentum setup that I see 
So we've talked about Tesla kind of being in between. Wait and see. Netflix to me is outright momentum upside. Now I want to talk about a name that is no doubt still a short trade in my view. We've covered GoPro a couple times now recently in these weekly outlooks and you know last week came into the week saying that this thing was a short you had a bad breakdown below 50 bucks and I just felt outright it was a short if you remember I had mentioned the possibility to now follow this downtrend lower on GoPro and if you look coincidence or not that's exactly what happened we had a good two-day drop to start the week going from 47s down to 42s found support right at this downtrend line and then kind of bounced. But what I like about GoPro from the short side of the equation is that is a weak ass bounce. You know, that's like getting blown out by 50 one game and then coming out the next game and you only got blown out by 20. It's like, all right, well, you still got blown out, bro. There's no moral victories here. So GoPro hasn't showed me anything to really change my mind that she has put in a bottom and you know I'm definitely going to be looking at GoPro as a short I'll be looking to probably short calls versus then owning puts because I've noticed that there's just not a lot of liquidity in the options at least compared to my other names so I'd rather short the premium than own it <clears throat> but anyways I'll get into that this week so with that all said what will change my mind on GoPro well first of all just want to zoom in on this action here so you had a high volume gap down below 50 bucks this was last Friday you can see 20 over 20 million shares traded alright so this range here this is the range that is marking my bias on the short side of GoPro as long as you are staying below the high from this gap down day which is just underneath 50 bucks I'm gonna remain short biased on GoPro if you are remaining the remaining below the low from this gap down then I'm really gonna be remaining short biased. you know I try and think about conservative and aggressive a aggressive short wants to see GoPro stay below 47 bucks that was the gap down low that I've highlighted here the conservative short wants to see GoPro stay below 50 bucks both shorts but just kind of difference in terms of you know aggressive setup and conservative setup so with that said the first step to a potential bottom in GoPro would be getting above this 47 mark to then set up a test up here back on 50 and then ultimately you have to get back above 50 to change my mind about GoPro shifting from a short to a potential long but not until you get back above 50 am I gonna make that call I still think GoPro is my best short setup out of my list right now and you know you can always see my list at the bottom of my screen <clears throat> another earnings name recently that is doing the exact opposite of GoPro here and we're looking at Twitter Twitter took an opposite direction instead of gapping down big she gapped up big and just gonna apply the same principles that I just went over on GoPro I wanna zoom in here to show you guys alright so here was the big gap up day you gap from 41's 42's up to 46's alright now this range this range creates kinda of the the range that I'm gonna be following on Twitter for long trades and if you noticed all week we stayed in that range on Twitter high volume range consolidated a little bit but look what happened on Friday we closed just underneath the high here so Twitter now if we can get a clean breakout above 4850 then this one really could have some upside potential beyond 50 bucks towards 55 and 60 in the weeks and months ahead so definitely keep your eye on Twitter Twitter will be one of my main watches at the outset of this week to see if it can stay up here because if you get this 4850 breakout this was the high on earnings I just feel like you're gonna see momentum come in I know I'm looking for momentum and you know I believe in myself I think if I'm looking for something and it happens then you know I'm on to something there so watch for that 4850 breakout and 
you know, if you get it, you want to hold 4850. I look for a break and hold. When I take notes in my notebook, I write down B and H to signify break and hold. So one of the things that I'll be writing in my notebook tomorrow, if Twitter is opening up around 4850s, I'll write, all right, watch for B and H above 4850 to target 50s. So that's just a simple setup on Twitter. Probably won't look at it much if it continues to just stay in this range and chop back and forth. I really like when you get out of a key range, so really just waiting on that 4850. But you can certainly trade the range on Twitter, and if you stall here, you might be setting up to go back down towards 47 to 46. But overall, just zooming back out, Twitter looks to have, you know, certainly put in a bottom and now as long as you stay above the low from that earnings day which was for in the 45s then Twitter should be looked at as net bullish you need to get back below the 45 area to trigger a short trade <coughs> on Twitter lastly in my list I've got Google here came above 550 and if GoPro is following the downtrend lower, Google continues to follow this uptrend line higher. Notice it's below the uptrend line, but it still is kind of hanging out around it. That's why I keep it on there. And for the first time since late November, early December, Google closed above 550. And you have a potential inverse head and shoulders breakout going on. I think we mentioned this last week. You've got your left shoulder here, your head here, and your right shoulder here, and your neckline right up here. You're starting to break out. Not only do you have that pattern, but you've also got a potential cup and handle. Not that I'm big on these patterns, but I do see them showing up right here. All right, so Google's got some good things going for it. The only thing I have against Google is she's been a, a real dog for the last one to two years. Really, since she, since that big gap up move, if you just go back October 2013, and then it topped in March of 2014. So I guess just the last 10 months, she's kind of been a dog channeling hasn't made new 52 week highs, hasn't made new 52 week lows. Actually, I think she did make new 52 week lows, but she didn't stay down there. So at any rate, you know, Google's kind of let me down before is what I'm saying in terms of looking for this to finally be the move or the start of a move. So what I've got in my notes is there is no reason to go back below 545 if a momentum move higher is underway in Google. No reason to go back below 545 if a momentum move higher is underway in Google. And ideally, you'll just be able to hold 550 from here. Just watch that over under 550 action. A couple small caps that we talked about last Sunday that are still in play first one is Jean, and Jean is not just in play, she is very much in play. If you're a small cap trader, then you better be trading Jean, because she has been the momentum stock of the last few weeks here so far. So I want to rewind a little bit and look at it based on this, because this is kind of what we were going off of at this time last week we had taken this spike high right high volume spike high it was right around 450 and what I was saying is hey Gene has done this before right we saw it in August we saw it in July we saw it in June it's made these spike highs and each time it's then gone on to make new lows so this time last week I was thinking this looks like a short you know you spiked up and history shows that she always gets sold into so I would view it with a short bias, but the caveat was if she's able to go above 450, that would represent a major change from historical activity over the last couple years, 
and she could really get going higher. I, I speculated that there was a lot of short interest in it due to Gene's history. And now just look at this, guys. I mean, just a sick move. Literally, as soon as you broke above 450, you went from five bucks up to nine dollars. That does not happen without a lot of shorts being on the wrong side of the trade. Look at this volume. So really good stuff going on here in Gene. Ton of momentum. And now people are going to be wondering, hey, did she, you know, is this different? Is this different than all the other times we've seen over the last couple of years? I want to turn to the 15-minute chart. I generally like using a 15-minute chart if I'm going to try and find a, you know, clear intraday trend pattern, whatever you want to call it. So looks like this $7.50 area can be your stop loss in the immediate term, the momentum trade. As long as you're above 750, I'm looking for Gene to go back up towards 10 bucks and above 10 bucks, you know, it's just a momentum trade. It's anybody's guess, but you do want to be selling on the way up and you want to be buying dips until it stops working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it till it is. It's worked very well to buy dips on Gene and you know, sell the rips. So that's that. Keep Gene on radar. The one thing I will say, this stock is going to have a big time down move. That's just the rules. That's the way it works with stuff like this. When will that move happen? I don't know. How high will the stock go first? I don't know. But I just know that it's going to have a big time down move. So when the reversal does start, I don't watch Gene every day, so I can't tell you. But when it does start, it will be a good short trade and so keep an eye out for that maybe it's this week alright well money flip trades Gene so he's the guy to keep an eye on tomorrow with his Gene stuff another one that we talked about last week that is still in play is FTR FTR did not have a single down day last week and <clears throat> just continues a very nice move not as violent as Gene to the upside but still a nice clean trend so this is one you know again you talk about aggressive versus conservative if you're looking for a aggressive play then Gene is your aggressive play if you're looking for a more conservative play on the small cap side but that's still playing out nicely to the upside then FTR has been a good one so just throwing that out there, something to think about. First thing I noticed, you have not gone below a previous day's low at all last week, so that's the first thing to watch for. Your low on Friday was 831. You have traded in a pretty tight range, not nearly the type of range that Gene is offering, so this one maybe not very good for day trading, but more of a swing trader's play at this point. But a very nice trend, good breakout. We talked about getting a eight dollar breakout last week that did happen talked about 750 being key support you held it the whole time so now I want to see FTR stay above eight bucks as long as you stay above eight bucks the immediate trend is higher if you were to break eight bucks I'd look for a back test kind of in this seven dollar to 750 range as that's kind of where the move started from the original breakout so watch that eight dollar level to buy dips versus below it maybe get a short trade down towards 750 to seven bucks overall though would still be net bullish on FTR while above 750 to seven get back below seven and you can start start downtrending so those were the plays that I wanted to go over on the stock side of things if you have any you'd like me to look at now's the time to mention them or just any general trading related questions CRIS let's look at that one Chris oh yeah so Chris is a nice beast move here another one that's up 100 percent in the last few weeks there's been some really nice momentum in these small caps 
This is another one where, you know, it's going to have a big down day just like Gene. When and from what price is the question. Both those I really don't know. Something like Gene and Chris, I'll tell you this, guys. Do not enter trades and leave the computer without a stop loss in place because when these break, they're going to break hard and they are not meant uh, for Ma and Pa to just be sitting in there waiting for the chickens to come home as they say. But this is a really strong move going on and would suspect as long as you stay above kind of 250 you will see this trend higher overall. Any other questions? So then you should stay away. I mean I don't tell people what to buy and, and what to sell. I try and say if your style is this then this is maybe what you want to do. And so on something like CRIS and Gene if your style is kind of slow and steady then I would not be looking at these two. If, if you like action and you like volatility then these are, you know, CRIS and GENE -E are two stocks that I would definitely be looking at. How do I get the stats on the stock on your level 2 screen? Main level 2 right under the chart. Okay, so you're talking about over here so you're talking about like my total volume my net change and stuff like that is that what you're talking about okay yeah it's simple enough you just right click and you click format col <coughs> format columns and then you will see all these different things that will pop up and allow you to add or remove and put in the order you want and all that stuff. One of the things when you format your stuff, Aaron, I definitely recommend, like on my option level two up here that I find really helpful with TradeStation is this average price and position and open PL and close PL. I have that on all of my level twos on my options so that way as soon as I enter I know what my position is I know how many contracts I have I know what my average price is and I've got my open P&L and my closed P&L right there so you know I, I'm just aware of my management and how I'm actually trading how I'm actually doing trading the stocks so definitely would recommend putting that up there because it just saves you time. You don't have to click back to your positions and be like, oh, okay, what am I in? What's my average? It's just right there on the level two. It really makes it nice. Any other questions? All right, one final thing I just want to mention. You know, I, I come here and I touch on Tesla, Netflix, Google, GoPro, Twitter. You know, and I mention all these as setups that I'm watching. But one of the things I don't do is I don't make up in my mind what I'm going to trade on a Sunday. In this case, the market's closed, so it's a Monday. But it's in my eyes, it's very important not to make up your mind what you're going to trade and how you're going to trade. Just because I'm talking about Netflix being a buy on dip versus 460s, you know, that doesn't mean that that's what I have to do. If I, at the end of the day, I'm going to watch price action, and if Netflix is moving well, then I'm going to look to trade it. But tomorrow, Netflix might open up and Netflix might not do a damn thing. Whereas Amazon, which I didn't talk at all talk about at all here today, might end up being a great mover. So I provide these setups that I'm looking at 
because it's true and it is what I'm looking at but I don't want you guys to think that that's exactly what I'm going to be doing these are fluid situations stock prices are always changing they're always on the move and one of the mistakes I used to make is spend two hours doing these intense charting sessions the night before the market would open and then in the morning I would look and I'd say okay I'm gonna trade XYZ and this is exactly what I'm gonna do but you know what it doesn't work like that it's not a perfect script you need to be willing to make edits and adjustments along the way so just because I you know mention these as setups that I'm watching doesn't mean I'm gonna trade them exactly the way I say the trend is working and just remember to be open-minded and remember that each day you want to let something stand out what I do when the market opens you know I'll pay attention to pre-market stuff and then I have this screen up this is my time and sales screen let me get to that I'll have my time and sales screen up here and I'll kinda just look at it for the first 30 to 60 seconds and I'll see hey what's catching my eye what kinda made a burst right away what you know just like I said what caught my eye I, I don't really know how to explain it I just know that something catches my eye or something doesn't catch my eye and you know within the first one to two minutes of the day there's usually a ticker that's standing out to me alright guys any final questions at all All right, good stuff, guys. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow morning. And let's have a good week, four-day week. Let's get it. Thanks.